Hey there, this is Dr. Corey Lim with Blue Sky Bio, and I wanted to make a video showing you a new concept uh, that we've been working on at Blue Sky Bio, which is to make a surgical guide that is also going to serve as your temporary. So whether you wanted to do an immediate load, say for a single tooth restoration or a multi-tooth restoration, um, or if you just wanted to convert that to a customized healing abutment that's going to profile the gingiva, this is an option that allows you to accomplish that step in uh, just a single guide. You'll be able to cut away that uh, portion of the remainder of the guide and turn this into the tent. Hard to visualize, so I'm going to just make a video here showing you exactly how to do this. So I've got my case here. This is a simple single tooth implant. It's already been planned out. I put just a... Uh, an abutment. This is one of the temporary cylinders that we sell at Blue Sky Bio, so you can see the positioning of that. And what we need to do now is we need to um, plan a restoration. And so I'm not going to just put in a library tooth like what uh, is typically done. You can certainly do that if you want to. Uh, but because I'm working with Blue Sky Bio, I have access to our early CAD module, uh, which is in beta form right now, so don't hit me up trying to ask for it just yet. We're still doing some testing. But what I'm going to do right now is change over to our crown and bridge module and so this is going to allow me to uh, design an actual crown that has correct contacts uh, tissue contour it's not going to be just a library tooth okay so what we need to do is we need to start out by just adding a tooth you'll have all the different libraries of teeth that we have available here let's use one of these from the Mitch Hurst flat anatomy library and I'll click OK and just drop that in and because I'm not really making a tutorial of how to use this software yet, just yet, I'm going to time lapse this and then I'll just narrate over it uh, because this is not really the main point of what I'm trying to show. So what you're seeing right now is that I'm globally positioning the tooth and I'm using some of the uh, manipulation tools to really dial this in and get the ideal gingival contour, uh, getting the contacts set where they need to be. And uh, once we've got this and we've really designated an ideal contour to this final crown that we want to generate, usually you would be designing occlusion too, then we go through the process of making the crown. And we're going to really set up the gingival contour to be ideal, make the crown bottom, and finalize the crown. Okay, and here you see this is the final crown. Again, the difference being that this one, I've actually developed an ideal gingival uh, contour to this. This is exactly where I would want this thing to emerge out of the tissue. So now that I've done this, I'm going to go back in my module to surgical guide and we can continue on with this process. So back in surgical guide, the first step of what I want to do is I want to make just a standard surgical guide. Okay, I can verify that my implant again is within the right position in this tooth and that looks like a perfect screw access hole. But if it wasn't, I could modify that a little bit, make it where it's going to be in the right position. So I'm going to lock the implant. I'm going to not turn on any tubes right now. Uh, what I'm going to do is instead just make a standard guide, one that does not even uh, have a tube turned on. Okay, so I'll draw the curve here. Okay, so here is our guide that we fabricated. And we're going to go ahead and now fabricate a secondary surgical guide. Remember, what I'm doing here is kind of a hack of the software. And so the idea that I'm going to go with is if you've ever done a full arch scan appliance, like let's say you scan the patients uh, with wearing their denture and then you scan the denture by itself. When you pull that denture in, it turns it into an STL and you can actually hit this button that says create scan appliance guide and it will, it will duplicate that denture, but this time it'll duplicate it with the guide tubes incorporated. I actually want to do that with this tooth that we've created. Okay, so if I was to turn this off, I want to, I want to create, let's just imagine for right now, just a guide that goes from here to here out of this tooth, okay? Now, I have to have that as a separate STL, not necessarily as a tooth, okay? So if you look right here, um, that tooth is not one of the options right here. So what I'm going to do, because uh, I can overcome that, is I'm going to quickly export that tooth. So export data. This is the custom crown that I fabricated. Again, sorry to tease you here, but that will be available soon enough to you. And I'm going to call this crown. And now that I've exported it, I'm going to pull it right back in.
file, import STL, and I'm going to pull the crown back in. The reason I'm having to do that is because now the software is not going to see this as a tooth per se, but now it sees it as a separate STL. Okay, so if I go to the surfaces panel, do you see now how it's, a, it's an STL surface in here? Because now I can utilize that function to create a scan appliance guide. All right, so I've got this crown, and what I'm going to do now is go to my guide panel. I'm going to build a scan appliance guide out of this crown. Let's lock the implants in virtual teeth. I need to turn on my, um, my kit and my tube, okay? And this is terrible salesmanship on my part, but really, if I'm going to do this technique, I, I don't want to use a metal tube. I want to go straight to the plastic. For that, I changed my guide hole diameter to 5.15. It's going to tell you you're deviating, which is fine. And then I changed the offset to 8.5. This allows you to use our fully guided kit without a metal sleeve. Okay, so with that done and with the tube turned on, which you can see is kind of right in the middle of this tooth, now I go to the guide panel. I'm going to make this guide out of this the brush diameter. You're going to want to change this brush diameter down to just two millimeters. Okay, and I'll show you what that means here in a moment. So now with that selected, I push create scan appliance guide. Okay, here is what gets fabricated. If I hide the crown now and look at this, do you see how now this this tooth has been turned into a guide, okay? Now, it's not a very useful guide at the moment, but bear with me, we'll get there. So, with that done, I'm going to turn back on the first surgical guide I made, and rather what I'll do is just use the cut tool, okay? So, in this, I'm just going to use the cut tool so we're cutting on just the surgical guide surface. I'm going to hit cut. Same idea on this side. If you get a mesh cut failure, don't worry about that. We'll fix that later on. And then from the top here, I want to cut out this area as well. All right, that's what I'm going for, okay? Do you see now um, what I've got? Basically, what I'm going to do now is combine this with this, and that's going to uh, turn this into a surgical guide that when I drop it onto this model, this guide is going to um, drop in, and you're going to actually do your surgery through this ideal temporary, which has perfect contours and everything, okay? And what I'm going to do is create some little sacrificial supports so that this is all a one-piece object. You would do your surgery through the crown. You would place your temporary cylinder through the crown, right, this one. And with that temporary cylinder emerging through, you would throw some uh, flowable in and lock this thing together. And as soon as that thing is locked together, pull everything out of the mouth and then cut the little supports between this, leaving you an ideal temp um, with everything perfectly planned, the emergence contour, all of that. The only thing you would have to do is salt and pepper the tiny gap between the margin of the crown and your cylinder. So this is the one step where I jump out of Blue Sky Plan to do this. Um, you could do this entirely within Blue Sky, Blue Sky Plan by connecting it with a custom implant. So I could do something like a six millimeter uh, long three by three implant. I'll just do one of these as a demonstration. I'm going to remove that abutment. No abutment. And then this guy we would flip around here. We would make this where it intrudes into the crown. and simultaneously connects down to that portion of the guide. See the idea here? All right, and then I could do multiple of those. I could do maybe one, two, three, four. 
and then you need these are all independent objects so how do you get those to connect you would come up here to export data and you would want to export the I'll just export all this stuff for right now I don't need the guide tube uh, I'm gonna be combining not the nerve not the gingiva but rather just the surgical guide and the little tooth guide I'm gonna just call this all combined for a moment and now I'm gonna open that in um, mesh mixer we'll open this file called all combined right here you can see it initially so again if you wanted to stay entirely within blue sky plan this has all been turned into one STL um, right if I'd have had the, the implants and everything turned off this would not be part of it I'm gonna separate that out we'll hide that for a moment but this is all one part so imagine if you had done four custom implants then now you don't have to do anything in mesh mixer this would just be your guide and you would go to print this um, we need to fix those little mesh cut failures, which that's what a mesh cut failure is. It's just somewhere that the software was unable to fully close that. Let's just repair those real quick. Uh, let me show you an alternative way, though, that if you are comfortable in Mesh Mixer where you could not do the custom implants, I'm going to delete that. In Mesh Mixer, you've got a bunch of different tools um, under the sculpting tools. You could use the brushes. You could say inflate. Let's change the size down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to inflate a sprue off of this. So it's going to pull it straight off the guide towards me. Right? Oops. Let me undo that. Now if I wanted to change directions here, I could maybe look at it. And now, again, if I click on it, it's going to pull it off straight towards me. There we go. And then I want to pull it straight this way. Now, here's the problem with that. It's, well, actually it did it. But the other option is I could just grab this now and select the tip of this. Push T for transform. And just pull this over. Rather, I'm going to be a little anal retentive here, and I'm going to uh, hide this for a moment, or separate it, I should say. So now if I want to use this inflate tool, I can start pulling it towards me. So you can't see that, but it's pulling it more and more towards me. All right, there, it's connected. I'm going to repeat the process over here. Let's pull off a section of our guide. Let's pull it upward. There we go. And now I'm going to pull that to my tooth. So I'm just clicking. I need to go a little bit more. There we go, that's connected. One more time on the lingual side. Notice I'm putting this where it, um, it impinges into this tooth in non-critical areas. These are on smooth surfaces, so I'm not messing up my occlusion. Um, these are going to become, again, I call these a sacrificial support, and it allows me to now just cut those and easily smooth things up without destroying the shape of my crown. Okay, so now I'll combine these back together. Combine, and this is my final guide, right? So now imagine you're doing your surgery. You would take this guide, right? Your implant's not been placed yet, and you would put this guide on, okay? The guide looks like this, and what you're doing is you're indexing this crown into its perfect position via where it sits on the uh, remaining dentition. This is all one piece, okay? 
Now, just like a normal guided surgery, you're going to use your Blue Sky Bio fully guided keyless kit. You're going to do the guided surgery through here. So take all your drills, proceed up to your final drill, in this case, the 5 by 10 drill, and then uh, place your implant through the guide. So your implant gets cranked in right through this. It forces it to bottom out at the perfect position. And now you could either leave the guide on or take it off for a moment and put your temporary cylinder on. Okay, so implants in, and now you put this temporary cylinder on. And again, if, if this guide is in place, that leaves you only a tiny little gap that you can now add some looting material. So we get your flowable composite, and uh, it should be mentioned, this whole guide should be printed in a Crown & Bridge material, something like uh, Crown & Bridge MFH, something that's the same shade as the patient's dentition, so that that can be a temp you leave in there. And now I would just take flowable composite, flow it into this little gap, connecting these two pieces together. And now with the cylinder locked in, unscrew it, pull this guide out of the mouth. You would have this now with this cylinder locked on. Here's your cylinder. This is what you would have. And the only thing that's left for you to do right now, uh, since all this is looted together, is now fill in the gap. So just make a nice, smooth, and even flowing contour connecting the margin of your temp cylinder up to the margin of your crown, which you've designed to have ideal restorative contours. And when you do that, now you come back with a diamond burr, you section this little piece of resin, section that, section that, section that, and you have a temp that's going to go into the perfect place. Occlusion will have been designed perfectly. Everything is ready for this immediate load temp. Now, not every case are you going to want to uh, do that. So hypothetically, again, imagine with me that you're left with this. It's been looted together with the crown now. You can cut off your excess chimney. You can fill in the gaps right here. But suppose you didn't want to do an immediate load. Maybe you decide you didn't have the stability you wanted, and rather you just want a custom sulcus former. Well, just take your diamond burr and flatten off the occlusion because you're still going to be maintaining this beautiful um, uh, contour that you're going to form this gingiva to so that when you come back to restore, everything is going to be the ideal shape with your gingiva. I can do that with the plane cut tool here. So imagine instead that you, you created this shape, right? You float composite in here, everything's been locked together. This chimney obviously would be cut off as well, and you have as good of a custom healing abutment as you could ever want without hardly any of the effort. Just a tiny bit of flowable composite to close that up. But the shape was all predetermined by your ideal restorative crown back when we designed that. So you can design this crown in ExoCAD, three shape. Um, soon you'll be able to do it in Blue Sky Plan. Uh, if you want to do it within Blue Sky Plan right now, prior to the release of this Crown & Bridge module, then you can just use a library tooth. It's just going to leave you a bit more of a gap to flow in with your composite. But I think this is uh, potentially a really nice option that if you made your guides this way, it always gives you this potential to have an ideal either immediate load temp or a uh, customized healing abutment and really allows you to get a better restorative outcome overall. So I hope you found that helpful.